Hi, AT from CNC at Home. I was up in St. Cloud and I thought I'd stop by the vacuum center and sewing room to see what kind of things they had going on. Why don't we go ahead and go in and see if we can find my friend Perry, ask him some questions about what they do. So I'd like to introduce Perry Pierce, and is it fair to say you're the owner of the, I am the, owner. Yeah. the vacuum center and sewing room Correct. in St. Cloud, Minnesota? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I know the answers to most of these questions, but I'm going to ask so them. I just, so I ask? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how long have you guys been in business? 50 years. 50 years. 50 years this year. This is going to be 50. 50 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, we moved up here in 1971. Okay. And my dad and my uncle opened the store. And so now it's 50 years. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, tell us a little bit about then uh, the vacuum center and sewing room. Um, yeah. It's kind of its history. It's obviously vacuum centers where you sell vacuums, yep. but there's more to it than just that. Yeah. Well, again, you know, my dad and my uncle, we moved up here from the Chicago area. Um, and I was just a, a wee tyke. And um, dad had been in the vacuum business forever. He had a store down there, sold out went into something else, decided he wanted to get back into the vacuum business. We had family up here, it's a long story. Um, but um, came up here with my uncle and they started a, a shop here. It was just vacuum cleaners until 1990, hmm. when I finally graduated from college. Um, as I jokingly tell people, I went to college in the 80s, the entire <laughs> 80s. Um, but uh, I had done a lot of central vac installations and stuff. They were big at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had gone down to Elk River to put in a central vac. And, you know, for many years, Elk River was, you know, a blip in the road on Highway 10. I mean, whoever went to Elk River. And when I went down there, this was, you know, 1988, 89. Okay. And it was just booming. I mean, it was that new bedroom community. Mm -hmm. So um, went back and talked to some people at, at St. Cloud State that I had classes, you know, some professors and stuff. We did a market study down there, and they needed a vacuum shop. So went in there, started a vacuum, started another shop down there. The vacuums and sewing machines in our industry are, for some reason, tied together. A lot of vacuum shops have sewing machines, and sewing machine shops have vacuums, and even our industry leaders kind of do both, a lot of them. And so she came in. Do you do sewing machines? No. And I just started getting into it. I would tear machines apart at night, um, figure out how to how to work them, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another and got into sewing machines. Um, in 2000, um, we built this building. We were in 1,500 square feet just down the, down the road here a little bit. Okay. Built our 5,000 square feet here, brought sewing machines up. Both sides of the industry have, have changed quite a bit. Um, you know, on the on the vacuum side, a lot of battery operated stuff, the robotics, you know, all the kind of stuff. But the sewing machine side is unbelievable. What has happened? Unbelievable. The the thing I always kind of jokingly say is that I only know of two things that were invented perfectly the first time, and they've never changed it. Things have been added, but mm -hmm. in the way that it works, the toilet and the sewing machine. From day one, a sewing machine goes thread guide. Tension, mm -hmm. check spring, take up lever, down to the needle, and has a hook of some kind that that makes your knot underneath. Right. I don't care if it's my if it's my hundred dollar machine over there or my twenty thousand dollar machine. It still threads the same way. It still forms a stitch the same way. Right. You can add all kinds of other things on and make it do all kinds of different things, but it still sews the same way. Right. Which, like you said, I mean that's incredible. It's just like you would have you know sorry. Well, Technology, we should have been able to make a they better tried. knot. They tried. Yeah, a knot's a knot. Yep. Right. Yep. So the only thing that's really changed is either a front load bobbin <clears throat> or a top load bobbin. Okay. But it still works the same. It's either going to go this way or it's going to go this way. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, you obviously do sales and you do repair. We do. Yeah, yeah. and sewing machines yep. and vacuums. And vacuums, yep. Commercial equipment, carpet mm -hmm. extractors, scrubbers. And what else do you guys do here? I know you do sales, but. That's really about, I mean, on the sewing machine side, we, we have classes and clubs that meet, mm -hmm. um, gets into the creative side. That's the, that's the fun side. Okay. You know, sewing, machine, uh, sewing machines went from, when your mom had hers, it was more of a chore. Right. You know, now it's gone to a hobby. Mm -hmm. And so that side's a lot more fun with, like I say, clubs, classes, the creativity, all that kind of stuff. You know, the vacuum side's more of the work side. Um, some people enjoy vacuuming, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, you know, the vacuum that we have, like I said, I've had that for 30 years. Um, in, in, I got it in 91, so it'll be in October. You can't have a vacuum cleaner last for 30 years. You're supposed to go to Walmart and buy one every four or five years. Don't you know that? How are you going to well, keep the economy working sorry, that way? Yeah, it's an Electrolux. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it was a gift from my grandmother because she had an Electrolux that she had gotten, yep. you know, who knows how it was a tank, you yep. know, and, and I remember that one because it had the, the automatic uh, cord recoil thing. Pretty fancy that for the was, time. That was very fancy. Absolutely. And you could also hook the hose up to the and exhaust. Yeah. yeah. And that was just mind blowing yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And if you're interested, I actually have one of the first Electrolux models ever made up on the wall over there. Really? Yeah. Okay. Looks an awful lot like my grandmother's, yeah. actually. Yeah. CNC at Home is, yep. is my channel, yeah. as we've talked about, and people are probably wondering, the subscribers are like, well, why are they talking about vacuums? <laughs> it's like, oh, they're going to be talking about those you know, little automated robot sure. things. Those aren't CNC machines. Right. Sort of, <laughs> for the most part. Right. They're vacuums, yep. you know, and, and that's a cool technology. So the question is, why would we be here for CNC at Home at a vacuum and sewing center? And the answer is? For embroidery and quilting machines. Okay. Yep. They are, I mean, today they are basically little CNC machines. I mean, you have a two-axis plotter that you actually slide onto a machine, and it's programmed, and it's going to move back and forth, and it's programmable to make all kinds of designs and fun stuff. Right. Um, and change thread automatically or have multiple... Uh, to, to, to a point. Yeah, to multiple point. Uh, um, spools available, essentially. Yes, yes, so yep. Probably four, six, ten. Um, with ten. Okay. Yeah. Which is, that's a fair amount of color. You've yeah. got a black and a white, you've got yeah. your RGB and then your secondary colors. Yep. So you could pretty much do a lot of, of things with that. Yeah. Um, computer interface, I would assume. Absolutely. Yeah. So probably right on the machine, there's some programming available, probably thumb drive or SD card where you can put a picture in, maybe something like that. Yes, all of the above. Okay. So you, you basically have now where the machines can actually be digitized, the design right in the machine. Okay. Okay, which is fairly new. So um, when you say digitized machine, does it have a camera? Or yes. it does? Some models actually have cameras. Okay. They have a camera mounted over the needle. And on your on your embroidery unit, on your plotter, you have a, a, t a, a palette you put on there. You can take a simple picture. When I say a picture, um, a, a coloring book picture. Okay. Um, you know, it's not a photograph. You know, um, I mean, but you could put a photograph under there, though, and it would interpret that maybe, uh, or maybe not. P part of what you have to remember is that we're, we're dealing with threads, right? We can't blend, right? People think printing. Well, why can't I have these greens shaded? It doesn't. I mean, it's going to go a color, a color, a mm. color. So right. we can't really take a photograph. There is some photo digitizing that we can do, mm -hmm. um, but it's usually all done in shades of black and white. Okay, I guess that's more of what I was thinking is not yeah not right. reproducing a photo, but yep. taking a picture of of my daughter, for instance, and putting it down there, and then it could take a picture and, and interpret that to there are some some degree yeah at yep. least to at least maybe degree. do a, yep. some sort of outline yep. kind of thing. Most of the designs today for most of the customers, I mean, I find that people either buy software and do the programming, do the digitizing, mm -hmm. okay, or they do the embroidery, okay. Because it takes so long, I mean, as you know, to master the programming. Sure. Okay. Um, that people either really enjoy that and get into it and master it, mm -hmm. or they absolutely hate it. Okay. And so it's just the difference between the programmer and the operator. Mm -hmm. And so most of these people, because they're doing it for fun, they might love to, to get the creativity of the digitizing and programming and doing these types of things. Um, but most of the people are like, just give me a pre-done design. I'll download it and throw it on my USB memory stick, put it into my sure. machine, and stitch it out. Now a lot of those machines are also Wi-Fi connected. Oh, cool. Sure. Okay. Um, and you said with the camera, we literally have now where you can take a smartphone, take a picture, Wi-Fi it to your machine, program it on the machine, <laughs> and embroider it. Wow. And people wonder why these have suggested retails at $20,000. Sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you can imagine the processing that it takes on that machine. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, a, along with everything else to be able to do that. Right. And then the sewing machine part. And right. I just had an interesting question. With the, with the machines that have multiple 
uh, spools of thread. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's got it's got eight or ten. Yep. Um, it doesn't have eight or ten needles. Yes. It does. So yes. each one is is already pre-threaded. Correct. Okay. You have to do something along the way. They will thread the needles by themselves. Those type of things. Yeah. Okay, so at least it can do the needle part, mm -hmm. but not necessarily go through the tensioner. Correct. So you'd probably want to have a different tensioner anyway for each thread, because even if they're the same kind of thread, I would imagine that there's going to be variances based just because of the color or how the Correct. color was done. Absolutely. That the tension might need to be just a slightly yep. different, just yep. because it's green versus red. Right. As an example. Okay. Yeah. Which makes sense. And there's even nuances of. Even though you know, and we can take a picture of this, you know, video of this, but the, the the head slides from needle to needle, so your mm. driver stays the same. Okay. And we slide to the next color. Right. Okay. And even as we slide some of those, as our threads are going across the top, they get pulled in some different directions. Mm -hmm. So we still want to be able to tweak those because the ones on the outside. And go through a different right. A they different maybe path. need a little less or a little more tension. Correct. Probably Correct. a little more if they're on the outside, a little less maybe if they're towards yep. the middle. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And and I think what you almost have to get into, as I'm just processing in my mind where you're coming from, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the of the CNC type of things that are done are cutting material away. Now yeah, we start until, getting yeah, into the until 3D. 3D, print, the 3D printers came out. That becomes an, it's called additive. Right. When you do 3D, now we're it's laying, subtractive. Right. So when you okay. when you start with it's sculpture. Right. You start with a stone and you take away right. what you don't want to reveal the sculpture. Inside. So really, what we're doing you're with additive, we're really. adding. Yeah. So people will want to take and say a a design is digitized for a 30 weight thread. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Typically, 40 weight thread would be normal. Okay. okay? Um. And a 30 weight thread is actually heavier. Okay. Okay. Now, when you do a 30 weight thread, if you have a dense, densely done design, it piles up and it doesn't look good. Sure. Because it's it's made so every thread is laying next to each other at that weight. So, like you were saying, you know, could you possibly have different weight threads and different size needles? Yes, and mm -hmm. I mean, for the sake of conversation, but you would never do it. Practically, it just doesn't. So in the in the controller, essentially, or the brain for the sewing machine, you're not identifying um, for this color, it's this weight, and it calculates Correct. the spacing and then say, well, now I'm going to this heavier weight, and it recalculates for a different no. weight. Okay. All right, cool. Um, would it be possible to uh, see some of this equipment in action? Absolutely. Okay, that'd be yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Let's, yeah, take let's a look. go to it. All right. All right. Okay. So, I mean, you guys are choosing to run this with a tablet. Can you run it with, like, a laptop or a PC? Not this version. Not this particular version. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you'd want all your, you'd want to see it right here. Okay. Right. I mean, that, that makes sense. Now, does this kind of equipment have any, um, like, homing function where it can, it can move and say, oh, now I know where I am relative to my stand, or is it purely... You orient it and say, "Here's my my zero or my starting point." Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, You're gonna set your zone and stay within these parameters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does it have any Does it have any limit switches? So if I told it to start here and I say, "Come six feet this way," which it can't do, does it Does it know to stop or does it mm, that's Does what it I just try? Did when I went from here to here, I picked my area. Okay. But if you pick here and there, it would do it. It would try it to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough.
It is. So in our world, we have two different things that we do. One, we hold the fabric in one place mm -hmm. and move the machine. So this is for quilting. Right. Or the other one, we hold the machine in one place and move the fabric. Okay. For the embroidery. Okay, interesting. So is, is there an advantage to one over the other? Well, this would typically be used on a 10-foot frame. Okay. All right, so let's get back. So this is set up with that five-ish? Yeah. Okay. We just have this set up for display. So right. this would normally be 10 feet long. Okay. Or you can go 12 or in position. position. You're going to take your quilt. You know, and quilting, of course, is taking perfectly good pieces of fabric, cutting them into tiny little pieces and sewing them back together again. Right. Um, putting that together as your top, you're going to have your, your, your sandwich here. Mm -hmm. You're backing your batting into your top. And then this would be quilting it together. Okay. To keep things from shifting. Right. What our grandmothers and great grandmothers used to sit around doing by hand. And like I say, so in this situation, because we're talking about a king, a queen, king size quilt being loaded on here, it's not practical to move the fabric. Right. So we'll move okay. the machine. And we aren't we aren't filling in, you know areas and, and doing small little tiny you know fill in stitches mm -hmm. so we're doing much larger running stitches because nobody wants your quilt would be like a brick you know if you'd actually did a sure. embroidery on it oh yeah 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 okay so so when you get done with an area then you just you just go go, go to the yeah. next spot and then do some more and move to the next spot right. okay so you would start say here move down your 10 feet roll your quilt up mm -hmm. 10 more feet. Yeah. yeah, so that's the that's one one aspect of how this integrates into mm -hmm. the sewing field. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. That's just it's it's really cool. I mean, cuz it's not a cheap machine. No, you know? I mean you're you're talking in here um, you know in the you know 18 19,000 dollar range. Yeah. Uh, so, but again, in you know we we talk about how, you know, on the in the sewing side, like I say, it, it's now a hobby. Right. I mean, this, there's people that are passionate about this. Because people will say, well, how can you spend, you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 on a sewing machine? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, it's your boat. It's your snowmobile. Okay? Sure. It, yeah. you know, it's, it's, your, it's your laser cutter. You know, whatever. <laughs> um, whatever. My laser cutter wasn't near <laughs> this expensive. But, but it's just, also, it's about as small one as you can get. Right. But you know what I'm saying? It, yeah, absolutely. It, what's your passion? What do you, what do yep. you enjoy? Um, and we don't justify those areas. That's your, that's your fun, right? Okay, but like this is one place. <laughs> What's the pi price per pound for that uh, walleye? <laughs> I use I use do the fishing and sewing machine together all the time, or they'll buy this for their own use, mm -hmm. and they say, "I don't want to do it for a business, but I know enough people. I'm in a quilt club, whatever. I will do two quilts a month for other people." Oh, Ooh. sure. So I'm going to do six hundred dollars a month. I'm going to make six thousand dollars a year. And I can right. pay off my machinery in three years. Okay. Yeah, so we can move on to one of the other machines. And okay, sure, that'd be awesome. Okay. So, we talked about this is a, a, a 10 needle machine. Okay. Okay. And I guess I never really thought about it, but the way you said it, this is basically your, your tool changer from needle to needle. And so, when we, uh, I should have should have hooped something up here. So, you want to play? Sure, sure. I can play. Now, one of the things too, and, and I don't want to, you know, be negative, but you, the challenge in our industry mm -hmm. is to get the the interface, if you will, between the technology and the consumer. Mm -hmm. Now, remember who our consumers are at this level, right? Okay, they're typically people sixty plus, right? I mean, we have we have customers that are 70, 80 years old using this. Mm -hmm. 
So the challenge is, how do you get them to use this technology? How do you make it so simple right. that they can use it? Okay. Okay. I mean, could your grandmother use one of your CNC machines? Mm -hmm. but go ahead and touch your screen. Okay. So we touch the screen. Yeah. Harder. There you go. All right. Okay. So now we have we have our workspace and selections on what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So the exclusives are just a, some built-in designs. Touch the exclusives. Okay. Because this is going to be firm up here. Okay. Um, try not to hit it too hard. You want to do? Let's do some floral. Some florals. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So we have some ones that you can select there. Go ahead and pick a floral design. All right. uh, and you can page mm -hmm. through or do whatever to. But sure. Okay, so paging through. I mean, can I, do I get to swipe? No. No. Nope. That just that nope. picks. Uh, you know what? I guess this so is what we have in there. Okay, because otherwise it would have, uh, it would maybe have a. Correct. Yep, something a slide on the yep. side. So okay. I was going to pick the roses. And that's fine. Okay. Um, but I don't like. Well, the only thing like there that. is that we're we're going to work with an eight by eight. Okay. And we are seven and a half by eleven and a half. So right. let's let's and do so a I don't get to resize one. that on you, this particular interface. You can, but okay. we're probably not going to get it down three inches. Okay. Within, within that. All right. Again, because as we talked about before, you're you're adding, you're laying in. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Cool. Actually, you know what? A lot of the florals are probably be too big. Uh, let's just hit return. Let's go back. Um, so or let's do um, yeah, let's do a novelty. Okay. Okay. How about a bow tie? Now my one and only four Battle fair. Okay. So. Um, I like the bird better. Eh, it's kind of a simple design. Truck. Let's do the truck. Too complicated. There you go. That'll work. Okay. That'll work. Not too big then. Okay. Right. Um, so we've got the size up here. So we got the height and the width. Okay. Yep. So. Set. Oh, we'll set. Okay, set. set. That's what okay. I want. Okay. Yeah, Let's add. There's yeah. wire through that whole thing. Okay. Let's go to your lettering. Every turn okay. It just doesn't matter which one. Just choose oh, a regular. Really? Pick a font. And there's your slide. Yeah, you so can change your font. Okay. Over it too many times, probably yeah, the wire. Yeah, stepping on it or getting it caught on something. Yeah, yeah, it it this is for a truck. Because you know what? I would pick like an old English font. Yeah. We'll go with something. Uh, yeah, we'll go with something simple here, actually. Sans serif. I like that one. Okay. So, let's do a, we're going to do a medium size. Go ahead and spell it out. Okay. We'll go back. Arthur the author. Yeah. Where's... Yeah, unfortunately it's not set up like a keyboard, it's just, you know. All right. Uh, back to art. Okay. Okay. So set that one. Okay. We'll set it. And then positioning is done. Touch screen. Touch active. Grab it and drag it. Oh. Okay. So I just yeah. grab that. Oh. Okay. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do array. Let's array it this way. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. Oh, oh, I went down too far. Should I take that home? Okay. And let's do with our it? size. Should I check and in on Friday let's if I come do in the proportional. Or not. Yeah, and right. let's uh, stretch it out a little bit. Okay. okay. And let's go back to our array and let's. Uh, okay, that's as far as we can go. So, again, we could do you know some fun stuff around. You know, where we want to go, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Thank, Thank you. you. And edit. Yep. Okay. okay. And I go back to work and clean. Uh-oh, we're outside of our order. Maybe, yeah, oh. next time I come in, I'll bring Oh, wait, no, it isn't because so we don't have it on. Uh, uh, so we're going to put our frame on. It does okay. know the size of our frame. Okay. How does it know the size of the frame? Is there is there like a... There's a little a sensor back in here. Okay. Um, just a little potentiometer that as you, as you slide it out, it moves itself up and down. Okay. So anyway, so there's our... There's our design. Okay. Now what we can do at this point is I can move it with okay. my to get it where I want it. Interesting. Okay. So it's like you were asking as far as you know, and it won't let me go outside the hoop parameters. So right now this would tell me what color I should be doing. Okay. okay. This one right now is um, going to take 64 minutes. It's 18 <laughs> colors. It's 38,000 stitches, and it could take 64 minutes. Now, we would typically hoop up the, the color thread to the corresponding needle that it's going to want. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's one place that people get confused is that it may not do that sequence one, two, three, four, five. Okay. It might go one, seven, four, six, two, grabbing those colors. Okay. Is, is that based off randomness or is there an optimization? It's fairly random from okay. all I can see you know, okay. in here. Um, so, but at this point, we unlock it. Oop, helps if we thread it. All right. So, as we see our threading coming down here, um, this one does have our automatic needle threader on it, so we can bring our threader down. Oops. So basically what we do is we bring our thread down, and then we hit our thread button. And we take our thread across. Cut it off. And it threads. That's cool. We can go to number two. Good. Fall for the threader. Hook it across. Just a little wire that yeah. comes through the eye of the needle. Okay. Right. We have that on our sergers. Oh, okay. We have air threading on the sergers. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so it's not out of the realm of possibility. No, no not really. Okay. It's just, that's so simplistic. It's just like, well, why not? Because the needle is it's going to be in a certain spot. And this machine runs a thousand stitches per minute. Okay. So you can imagine we talk about like in an in a industrial setting, a commercial setting. Mm -hmm. Imagine having four, six, eight, twelve of these all running at one time. Right. I mean, it's almost definitely. Oh, I would imagine. Okay. Yeah. And so they're all running off of the same program. And there's pros and cons. Gonna go over and look at a household one, and this is gonna be the home hobbyist. Or home hobbyist, right. okay. Because but you yeah, can get this as the embroidery yeah, only, mm -hmm. or you can get it sewing and embroidery. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and this is really it's showing that a sewing machine is a CNC machine. People who just in, in general are not gonna think of that.
So that's through their app mm -hmm. on your phone. Okay. Which is free. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Well, I can rotate it in the machine. Yep. Enter. All right, so we're going to send it to the machine. Just like that machine then with putting sure. it in here. Yeah. And so it starts and this one probably is starts with whatever number one color is. Correct. And then you just yeah, you just load that in. Okay. Perry and I kinda go way back as fun to see him and uh, spent quite a bit more time there than I thought we would. Um, there were a couple bloopers, I thought we'd just show those real quick. That, that reminds me of my uh, my first year of college I went to NDSU. Okay and my work study was in the computer lab mm -hmm. and the school of architecture is big at ndsu okay and that's the first time i ever saw a pen plotter oh okay sure and what we did as as um, the students there in the in the computer center is anything that had output because you didn't couldn't afford to have printers everywhere. I mean, this was you know, 1983. Right. Um, and so we would we would see these uh, architecture students that are you know there until three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the plotter would kick in and it would do all this stuff, and then we were to roll it off and cut it off and roll it up, and we'd put it in a bin. Sure. And then you know send them a message that you know find your finished product in you know bin E17, and we got to know what it was supposed to look like. <laughs> And then, like I say, you'd 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 see it going, and you're like, oh no, that's that's not right, you know. <laughs> and they would walk in to the to the you know data pickup area, and they right. just look at you, and you just kind of go, <laughs> and they would just turn around and leave. <laughs> <laughs> or more than a Nissan Versa, <laughs> <laughs> or a Hugo. How are we going to stay in business if you don't break it? I'd like to thank my friend Perry for taking time out of his day to talk with us about uh, sewing machines and vacuums and uh, how sewing machines can actually be a CNC machine. It's fascinating to see what the technology has done in the last uh, few years and really brought that technology uh, down to an affordable price where uh, a person can have that in their home and, and really do it as a hobby and enjoy it, um, maybe make a little money on the side. Um, it's fantastic. So thank you to Perry for uh, letting us come in uh, to the vacuum center and sewing room up in St. Cloud. If you happen to be in the central Minnesota area and you need a vacuum or a sewing machine or need a repair on either, why don't you stop by, uh, they'll, they'll do it for you. If you enjoyed this video, Go ahead and hit the like button if you want. Uh, if you like our content, go ahead and subscribe. And you'll be notified when we uh, have new videos that come out. It helps the channel, um, and uh, hopefully we can improve the content. The uh, more members that we get, or the more subscribers we get. So anyway. 
thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video.